We are Luminous Figure Painters. Welcome! This is the first in a series of painting tutorials for the craft world Aldari in a grimdark style. Today, I'll show you how to paint Eandon, the greatest world ship of the Empire that was. All the products that I've used will be listed in the description and will be displayed in each following segment. Now let's light our lamps and grab our brushes. The first few segments will be focused on priming the model. I included this for those that are unfamiliar with zenithal priming or undershading. Begin by adding the Yeho black primer to your model at approximately 30 psi. Then at a flat angle to 45 degrees, apply the Yeho gray primer. Finally, apply a 50-50 mix of Liquitex white ink and airbrush thinner at about a 75 degree angle. We will now begin preparing the undertones for the yellow armor by applying Vallejo Model Air Light Rust over the primed surface at approximately 20 pounds per square inch. Follow this up with a layer of sunny skin tone from Vallejo Model Colors Thin with a touch of airbrush flow improver and airbrush thinner, both from Vallejo. Then, apply Vallejo model color ivory or white mixed with thinner and flow improver to the zenith, or what would have been the white ink in the prime layer. The last step to get a nice yellow color is to thin lightly some yellow ink from Vallejo Game Ink. Glaze this over all the established undershades to get a nice warm yellow armor scheme. The ratio of ink to thinner is about 1 to 3 in this case. The final step for the yellow armor is to weather it using nicks and scratches painted on with a roughly 3 to 2 ratio of Vallejo white or ivory and lemon yellow. The trick here is to be very random. Use stippling, dragging, and dry brushing to get an aged look, or get a very fine tip on your brush and randomly paint very small scratches. Next, we'll prepare the helmets using a little thinner and flow improver mixed with Vallejo Game Air Imperial Blue. Next will be a layer of thinned and flowing ultramarine blue from Vallejo Game Air. We're almost done getting the blue down with Electric Blue from Vallejo Game Air. Thin this paint just a little bit more than the other layers, probably about 2 to 1 thinner to paint, and turn your PSI down to around 10 pounds because we want to be a little bit more accurate in our highlighting. Finally, apply Vallejo Model Color Ivory or Vallejo Game Air White mixed with Electric Blue at a ratio of about 3 to 2. Add more thinner and flow improver than previous layers and apply to the zenith at approximately 10 pounds per square inch on what would have been the white ink in the prime layer. This is meant to give a sense of reflection of light on what is to be a shiny surface of Wraithbone, so take your time and don't overdo it. Now we will base and weather the tabard this is done with Vallejo Game Color Extra Opaque Heavy Blue Gray, highlighted with Ghost Gray, and once more highlighted with Model Color White. You can dry brush with these last two colors or paint very fine lines to make it look like scratched cloth or silk. This is a fairly mundane detail, so there's no need to waste a lot of time on this. 
Next, grab your preference of black paint. You can go with glossy, satin, or matte. Alternatively, you can use a contrast paint from the Citadel brand, as I did. Paint this into the recesses, which show exposed joints such as the insides of elbows, the waist, and behind the knees. But don't waste too much time, as this is a fairly boring detail. Still, try to be neat in your application. The next step will be to apply the base layer of the Yeho Metal Color Burnt Iron to the melee weapons. You can do this with a bristle brush or airbrush, as it is a very smooth paint. In the same way that we highlighted the yellow armor, we'll now use the Yeho Metal Color Pale Burnt Metal and stipple on and scratch the weapons as well as the shield. Next, apply the Yeho Metal Color Gold to the Eldar decorations and runes. These are located on the axe, chest, and outer rim of the shield. Now we will take the Yeho Metal Color Chrome and apply another layer of texture and scratches to the axe and shield, as well as paint the base layer for the gems, located on the shield, axe, helmet, and pauldrons. Using Citadel's Spirit Stone Red and Waystone Green, glaze over the chrome that we just applied. Now grab about a 1 to 1 ratio of gloss varnish and thinner and apply with a pressure of around 30 pounds per square inch over the entire model. Allow this varnish to dry for 10 to 15 minutes. Selectively pin wash the recesses. Allow to dry for 10 to 15 minutes or with a hair dryer. Then remove the excess paint with a cotton swab soaked with mineral spirits. Do this over the entirety of the model, not just the yellow armor as shown here. The blue armor, the metals, the gold, everything. Don't miss a spot. Now apply Citadel's Druchi Violet with your airbrush at a very high PSI, around 30 or 40, from a very low angle. After that's dry, you can create a model defect with a cotton swab soaked with alcohol. Dab lightly so as not to remove too many layers of paint. Can you see that light at the end of the tunnel? <laughs> ah, ah, kill me. Anyway, thinner and Liquitex white ink at a ratio of 2 to 1. Glaze this on lightly and build up more white up to the source of light. If you built Wraith Guard, you can do this at the tip of the gun they come with. Now, clean out your airbrush and, with thinner and Vallejo red ink, at a ratio of 2 to 1, glaze over the white we just laid down. Use several layers and build the color over the areas that have white on, and overlap the non-white areas only a little. Make sure the red is very vivid at the end. You want this to pop. So this is where the magic happens. Grab some white ink or white or ivory paint and thin it to a wash consistency using your choice of thinner, be it Lamian medium, wash medium, water, or airbrush thinner. Let this pool in the deepest recesses and paint over any adjacent sharp angles or surfaces that are likely to reflect the light source. Make sure to quickly clean up any mistakes with a damp brush. Thinning out the paint can weaken it a touch, so make sure to lay down a couple coats. After this white paint has dried, 
using Vallejo Model Air Red fluorescent paint. Glaze over the white. This paint is fairly thin, so I don't think it needs much thinning out of the bottle, but you may do so if you don't like the strength of the effect. Also note that the paint will dull as it dries. Repeat the ink glaze, the whitewash, and the floor glaze to your satisfaction. And that'll be a done model. Base and seal the way you like. Thank you for watching my very first tutorial, and stay tuned for the next one. Sorry about all the crappy perspectives and sloppy painting. It's my first time painting in this instructive manner. Also, any suggestions for future tutorials will be helpful. Like, comment, and subscribe for more grim dark content. Also, check out my linked social accounts such as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. Much love to you. Have a great day. Get in. Come here, kitty. Kitty, kitty. Oh, you don't like me.